So, you want to know if Apple's new AirPods Pro are worth the extra cash? Well, for the past three months, I've been comparing the AirPods Pro to the Sony WF-1000XM3s, Samsung's Galaxy Buds, the Jobber Elite 65Ts, and of course, Apple's AirPods Gen 2. So it's about time I give you guys my full review of the AirPods Pro. I'm Eric from TechSode TV, and if you're interested in diving deep into what technology can do for you, go ahead and smash that subscribe button and hit that notification bell so you can stay up to date with all the latest tech. All right, so I split this review up into multiple parts. So if there's something very specific you're looking for, check the pinned comment down below to see exactly where to jump in the video. And don't forget to drop a like if you appreciate video time codes. So let's start this off with the feature that totally blew me away with the AirPods Pro, and that is something called transparency mode. Now, lots of other devices have had transparency mode in the past. Some of them called it ambient mode, and they've had other names as well, but it's basically just a way for you to hear your surroundings while the earbuds are still in your ears. And every single other pair of earbuds I've used in the past that have this transparency or ambient mode, haven't been that great. They've either sounded robotic, or it still sounds like your ears are plugged, or it's still difficult to have a conversation with someone. But with the AirPods Pro, it was absolutely ridiculous. So you put these AirPods in, and you turn on transparency mode, and it sounds like you don't have earbuds in at all. It was really quite amazing. I was really blown away by this. And it's so much easier to have a conversation with someone with the AirPods Pro in with transparency mode, than with any of the other earbuds in the bunch. So for a more direct comparison, the Sony WF-1000XM3s, when I put their transparency mode on or ambient mode on, it sounded like my ears were plugged, but I could still hear what the other person was saying. Again, not nearly as good as the AirPods Pro, but you could still have a conversation. And I did notice a slight hiss as well. It was almost like uh, noise, and it just sounded like a hissing sound, uh, just kind of in the background, almost like a static. It wasn't distracting, but it was there, and that's something that I don't get with the AirPods Pro. The Jabra Elite 65Ts sounded much better than the Sony Buds when it came to their transparency mode. It was just a lot easier to hear what other people were saying, and I could hear myself a lot better as well. It didn't sound uh, as much like my ears were plugged with the Jabra Elite 65Ts. However, the noise with the 65Ts was definitely significantly higher than it was on the Sony Buds, almost distractingly high. But regardless, it was still a lot easier to have a conversation with the Jabber Buds than with the Sony Buds. In terms of sounding like your ears are plugged, the Galaxy Buds fall somewhere between the Sony Buds and the Jabber Buds. However, the Galaxy Buds were the most robotic sounding and the most difficult to have a conversation with someone, so much so that I can almost never have a conversation with the Galaxy Buds ambient mode, and I almost always just take the Buds out to have a conversation. The one place where the Galaxy Buds do very well in is amplifying loud noises or short, sharp sounds. So like a car horn would be really amplified in these, uh, banging sounds, Anything like that would really be amplified in this. So if you're running or you're bicycling or something like that, you're really gonna be able to hear your surroundings pretty well, but they're just not that great for having a conversation with somebody. The AirPods Gen 2 have no ambient sound mode, but they fit so loosely in your ear that it's easy enough to have a conversation with someone as long as you don't have music playing. So if I had to rank these from best to worst in terms of transparency mode and which was the easiest to have a conversation with someone with, it would go to the AirPods Pro for first place by a huge margin. Then next would be the AirPods Gen 2, followed by the Jobber Buds, then the Sony WF-1000XM3s, and in last place by a decent margin would be the Galaxy Buds. So bad, you're probably gonna have to take them out of your ears in order to have a conversation with somebody. Next, I wanna talk about active noise canceling. If you're not familiar, active noise canceling is a technology that gets rid of sounds like a jet engine or a fan or an air conditioner, or just kind of that repetitive kind of droning sound, kind of noise in the background, and just makes it silent, kind of makes it go away. And that feature on the AirPods Pro is pretty impressive, especially when you compare it to the AirPods Gen 2, the Jabra Buds, and the Galaxy Buds, because these three don't have any active noise canceling, the only noise canceling you get with these three is from the seal that it creates in your ear, kind of acting like an earplug, which is decent for the Jabra Buds and the Galaxy Buds, 
but there is no seal with the AirPods Gen 2. So these will be the noisiest ones uh, in terms of uh, noise canceling or getting rid of any ambient sounds. So since these three don't have active noise canceling, I'm gonna set these to the side and we're just gonna compare the AirPods Pro to the Sony WF-1000XM3s because these do have active noise canceling. Now, the only way I can think to describe this is to say that the AirPods Pro active noise canceling is like really good engineering. Like Apple knew what they were doing when they made this active noise canceling system for the AirPods Pro. But compared to the Sony Buds, it's like Sony's using straight up magic. I went into some really loud environments and I put the AirPods Pro in first and I was like, wow, that's like, that really cancels a lot out. This is really impressive. I can still kind of hear some of it, but this did a great job. Then I put the Sony Buds in and it was just silence. It was ridiculous how well the Sony Buds work at noise canceling. Just Sony, whatever they're doing is absolutely amazing. So if all you care about is active noise canceling, there's no better choice than the Sony Buds. Now let's talk a bit about audio quality, but full disclosure, I am not an audiophile, not an audio engineer, not an audio enthusiast. I'm just an average dude who likes listening to good music with good earbuds. I can tell the difference between a really bad pair of earbuds and a good pair of earbuds, but when you get to earbuds that are so close in price and quality, it's hard for me as an average dude to tell the difference between a lot of these, but I'm gonna do my best to break it down for you guys. So I'm gonna start with the ones you guys are probably most interested in, the Sony WF-1000XM3s and the AirPods Pro. And between these two, it does sound like the Sony Buds are a bit better. They sound uh, maybe just a little bit more clear, a little more full, you can hear more of the different instruments. But again, that could just come down to how these are equalized. And I think that's the biggest point right here. It's that the AirPods Pro don't have any equalizer. So what you get is what you get. And if you love that sound quality and you love how these have been equalized, then you're gonna absolutely love these earbuds. But the Sony Buds have a pretty robust equalizer and you can really fine tune the sound to your ears to sound exactly the way you like it. So because of that, because these have an equalizer that's really good, I'm gonna have to give the win to the Sony Buds for best sound quality. Now, if you're comparing the AirPods Pro to the AirPods Gen 2, then yeah, there's a significant difference in sound quality, uh, mainly because these don't create any seal in your ears at all. These do. Uh, the bass is more punchy with this. I feel like the bass is more clear and just overall, you get a much more full sound. You can hear all the individual instruments uh, easier with the AirPods Pro versus the AirPods Gen 2. Not that they sound bad, it's just that the AirPods Pro do sound significantly better than the AirPods Gen 2. Compared to the Galaxy Buds, it's a bit of a mixed bag because it really depends on how well you have your tips sized on the Galaxy Buds. What I mean by that is this tip right here, it comes with three different sizes. If you size it too small, then it's not gonna create a seal in your ear and the bass is going to suffer tremendously. Just the overall sound quality is gonna be absolutely awful compared to having a good fit. Now, part of the reason for that is the driver is in here, the thing that's actually moving the speaker back and forth isn't terribly powerful, so you really need a good seal to get punchy bass. But if you do get that good seal and you do get a good fitment, the quality of these buds is not that far behind the quality on the AirPods Pro, which is pretty surprising given the fact that the AirPods Pro cost literally double what the Galaxy Buds cost. Now there's more to it than just the sound quality and what you're paying for, and we're gonna get more into that in a little bit later, but purely based on sound quality alone, these are actually much closer to the AirPods Pro than you'd think. One more thing I need to point out about the Galaxy Buds is they do technically have an equalizer. It's more like five different presets that you can select between. Uh, honestly, only one of those presets, it's called Dynamic. That's the only one that actually sounds really good at all. The rest of them just make everything sound worse in my personal opinion. Uh, so it's kind of like these don't have an equalizer, even though they technically do. So that just leaves the Jabber Buds. Now these do have their own dedicated equalizer. It's not quite as robust as the Sony equalizer, but it's a lot more robust than what you get with the Galaxy Buds. And that allows you to really fine tune the sound to your personal preference. However, even though you can fine tune it with this, I feel like the bass is just more clear and more crisp with the AirPods Pro 
than it is with the Jabra Buds. So while you can get louder bass with the Jabra Buds compared to the AirPods Pro, the AirPods Pro have better, clearer bass, even though it may not be as loud. So if I had to rank these in terms of just sound quality and nothing else, the Sony Buds would take first place, then the AirPods Pro very closely behind that. After that, you'd have the Galaxy Buds just behind that, then the Jabra Buds, and in last, you'd have the AirPods Gen 2. So bottom line, while I'm kind of nitpicking the differences between all these earbuds, you really can't go wrong. If you're just an average dude and you're not an audiophile, then you're gonna be happy with whichever one of these you buy. Another important factor for wireless earbuds is latency. And latency is the delay between when you see something happen on a screen and when you hear it happen on your earbuds. So if somebody's talking on the screen and you don't hear them until a second later, that's super distracting and it totally ruins the movie you're watching. Fortunately, I tested all of these buds on an iPhone 11 Pro Max and a Note 10 Plus, and I didn't have any latency issues on YouTube or Netflix on both of those devices. Now it's time for the call quality test. So I'm gonna be calling this phone and recording the call with this Zoom H4n so you guys can hear exactly what it sounds like on the other end of the line when you're calling someone with all these different earbuds in. I'm gonna go get this set up and we'll get started with the test. For reference, here's what it sounds like without a Bluetooth connection. This is just me talking through a Note 10 Plus to an S9 Plus. So what you're hearing right now is what the person on the other end of the line would be hearing if I was using the AirPods Pro to talk to them through my phone. Let me know if this sounds good in the comments down below. Now I'm wearing the AirPods Gen 2. This is what it would sound like on the other end of the line if I was using the AirPods Gen 2 to talk to somebody. Let me know how it sounds down in the comments below. Now I'm using the Sony WF-1000XN3s. This is what the audio quality would sound like on the other end of the line if I was using the Sony WF-1000XN3s to make the phone call. Let me know how this sounds down in the comments below. I'm now talking through the Galaxy Buds. This is what it would sound like on the other end of the line if I was using the Galaxy Buds to have a conversation. Let me know how this sounds down in the comments below. Now I'm using the Jabra Elite 65 Keys to have the conversation. This is what it would sound like on the other end of the line if I was using the Jabra Elite 65 Keys to have the conversation. Let me know how this sounds down in the comments below. So that's it for the call quality test. I have a card popping out above me right now. If you click that, you can vote in a poll for which buds you think sounded the best. Now let's talk a bit about battery life. The AirPods Pro do have pretty good battery life. I did a test where I set the volume to 100%, turned on transparency mode, listened to a wide range of music, and just let the music play until the buds died, and I got four and a half hours of listening time. Now that said, 100% volume is pretty loud. It's so loud that I can't keep the buds in my ears at 100% volume, so I actually had to do that test by putting the earbuds on a table and then just waiting for the buds to die like that. So for a more practical test, I set the volume to 75% and kept transparency mode on to see how much battery life I would get in that case, and I got five and a half hours of battery life listening to the same type of music. What's most impressive is the charge time for the AirPods Pro. If they're both completely dead, and you throw them in a case for just five minutes, you'll get an hour and a half of listening time at 75% volume with transparency mode turned on. And that's pretty impressive. If you want to charge them to 100%, it takes just 60 minutes. If both the case and the AirPods Pro were completely dead, and you put those on a fast wireless charger, it would take 60 minutes to charge the AirPods Pro to 100%, and then another three hours to charge the case to 100%. So your total charge time is gonna be about four hours. And I did try a few different fast wireless chargers from different manufacturers and got the same results. And as far as I could tell, standard speed wireless chargers would give you the same results. I then completely drained the AirPods Pro and the case again and charged it back up, but this time with the lightning port plugged into Apple's 18 watt charger and the charge time was considerably faster. It still took 60 minutes to charge the buds to 100%, but it only took another 60 minutes to charge the case. So total charge time is two hours with the lightning port or four hours with wireless charging. So compared to the rest of the buds, the Sony buds have the longest lasting battery life with about six hours if you're using active noise canceling and about eight hours if you have active noise canceling turned off. Sony says you also get an extra three charges in the case. So that gives you a total of 24 to 36 hours, which is pretty impressive. 
The Galaxy Buds would come in second with at least six hours of listening time in my experience with an extra seven hours of charge in the case for a total of about 13 hours of listening time. The AirPods Pro would come in third with about five and a half hours of listening time in my experience and an extra 19-ish hours of charge time in the case for about 24 and a half total hours of listening time. Next would be the AirPods Gen 2 with just five hours of listening time and another 19-ish hours of charge in the case for about 24 hours of total listening time. And coming in last place would be the Jabra Buds with about five hours of listening time and only 10 hours of extra juice in the case for a total of 15 hours of listening time. Let's talk a bit about comfort. So the AirPods Pro are pretty comfortable. You just have to make sure you put them in correctly uh, to make sure they stay comfortable for extended use. So the first time I started putting these in, I would either tilt them up too far like this. Now this doesn't feel weird in my ears right now. It feels totally normal to have them in like this. Uh, but if I left them in like this for about 30 minutes, my ears would really start to hurt. Same for tilting them down too far. If I tilted them down like this, that doesn't feel weird in my ear either. It feels totally normal. But again, after about 30 minutes, I'm gonna be like, wow, my ear is really starting to hurt. And the reason for that is this whole piece right here is a really hard plastic. So that pressing up against your ear for an extended period of time really isn't gonna feel that great. So what I found is that if I put the AirPods in and I just kind of adjust the stems so that they kind of aim down towards my chin, that seems to be the best fitment for me to be able to have these in my ears for an extended period of time and not feel like it just hurts. But in terms of comfort, they're good, but they're not great. One more thing I wanna point out about comfort is the fact that these have a little port on the back that allows air to pass through, so it feels less like your ears are plugged when you have these buds in. In terms of working out, these do create a seal on your ear with this little silicon piece right here, and that helps them to stay in a lot better, especially compared to the AirPods Gen 2. So you shouldn't have any issues when it comes to working out, unless you're doing something like really intense, like some crazy CrossFit thing that's got you flipping and rolling all over the place or something, uh, maybe they'll fall out. Uh, but for like 95% of workouts, I think you'll be fine. The Sony Buds are definitely more comfortable than the AirPods Pro because you just have this silicon tip that's in your ear, and it's just a lot more comfortable for extended listening because of that. You don't have that hard plastic that's pressing into your ear anymore. Now the trade-off with that is these stick way far out of your ears compared to any of the rest of these uh, that I have. And they also don't hold in super tight either. So if you wanted to work out, these are not the buds for you. I feel like these would fall out pretty easily. Even if you're doing like aggressive push-ups or something, I feel like this is just gonna fall right out running. I feel like these would fall out uh, unless you like really size the tip super big or got like a compression foam tip to really seal it in your ear. I don't really recommend working out with these buds. If that's, if that's what you're going for, these buds aren't the ones to get. But if you're looking for long-term comfort, like you actually want to keep these in for like a long flight or something, like a seven hour flight, and you just want to keep these in the whole time, these are very comfortable. In my ears, the Galaxy Buds are one of the most comfortable. Uh, and part of that is because of how small they are uh, and they don't really take up a lot of space. And the other thing I want to point out really quick before I put this in my ear is that there's a silicon band here and that's what's pushing up against your ear and it's this uh, little bit of compression to it. So it's not nearly as hard or as irritating as what you get with the AirPods Pro. So these I can keep in my ear much longer than I can the AirPods Pro. One more thing I wanna point out is that you get three different bands to choose from, and each one has a different thickness uh, kind of wing at the end. This is basically no wing. Apparently I have like super tiny ears, like I have normally tiny ears. So if you've tried wireless earbuds before and you're like, none of these feel good in my ears, everything feels so massive and it just hurts, give the Galaxy Buds a shot because these, I, I've had that issue. No other earbuds have really fit too well in my ears and these fit just fine. So as you can see, these have a much lower profile than uh, the Sony Buds, that's for sure. Also a lower profile than the AirPods Pro because they don't have stems. So this is what the Galaxy Buds look like in your ears. Um, the white ones I don't think look that great. I'd recommend getting the black ones uh, if you can, but this just gives you guys an idea of what they look like. Now in terms of working out, these stay in really, 
well. I've worked out with these a bunch and I've never had any issues with them getting loose or falling out at all. The only thing I wish the Galaxy Buds did have is the air pass-through that the AirPods Pro have because after a while of listening with these on, it does feel a bit like your ears are kind of plugged up and I do kind of want to just take them out for a minute just because of that. It's not painful, it's just kind of like a weird feeling in your ear. The Jabra Buds are hands down the least comfortable earbuds for my ears. Part of that is because there's this huge bulb that really fills up that space in your ear. I can't keep these in for more than like an hour at a time, maybe two hours max, but then my ears really start to hurt. I'm gonna go ahead and pop these in just so you guys can kind of see what they look like. So here they are, they don't stick out a ton. I feel like they look pretty good. I feel like of all the earbuds, these are probably some of the best looking ones. That's, that's totally subjective and personal preference, but this gives you guys an idea of kind of how far they stick out from my head. And I do want to be clear that while these do hurt my ears, like I said, I've got pretty tiny ears. I have a friend who has these as well and they don't hurt his ears at all. He can listen two, three hours with no problems. The AirPods Gen 2, I'd say would be the second least comfortable uh, earbuds. And part of that is because these are just hard plastic all around. Pair that with the fact that they fit really loosely in there as well. And they're just overall just not comfortable. Now I wouldn't say these are bad, but they're just not nearly as comfortable as the other options, with the exception of the Jabber Buds. These are way more comfortable than the Jabber Buds, at least for my ears. Now, in terms of working out, the AirPods Gen 2 really aren't that great for it. They fit so loosely, they're gonna fall out pretty easily, no matter what you're doing when you're working out. But if you do have these and you do wanna work out with them, then I recommend getting some ear hooks. Uh, these are just some ear hooks I found on Amazon. They actually work pretty well. Uh, they were in an accessories video that I did a while back. Uh, so if you guys want to buy these, I'll have a link down in the description uh, and you can go ahead and get a pair for yourself. And speaking of links in the description, I also have links to all of these earbuds in the description as well. So if at any point in time you're like, ooh, these are the ones I'm going to go for because X, Y, Z, go ahead and check in the description and I've got an Amazon link right there for you. Now let's dig into some of the features. I mentioned wirelessly charging these earlier, so obviously these do support wireless charging. So do the Galaxy Buds and the AirPods Gen 2, but the Sony and Jabra Buds do not support wireless charging. You do have to plug in with a cable. For the Jabra Buds, it's a micro USB cable, and for the Sony Buds, it's a USB-C cable. In terms of controls, the AirPods Pro are much better than the controls you got on the AirPods Gen 2. On the Gen 2 AirPods, it was just double tapping. So you double tap the right one and you could skip forward. You double tap the left one, you could skip backwards in music. If you wanted to pause it, you would take a butt out, you put it back in, it would start playing again. But with these, you get a stem that you can squeeze. And when you squeeze it, you can actually feel it compress a little bit in your fingers. And it also plays a click in the speaker itself. So you know that it was acknowledged. Now a single squeeze will play or pause music. Double squeeze will skip forward. Triple squeeze skips back. If you take the bud out, it will pause the music, put it back in, it'll start playing again. However, that feature only works on an iPhone, not when you're connected to an Android phone. And a long squeeze of the stem will switch between active noise canceling and transparency mode. And that feature does work regardless of whether you're on an iPhone or an Android device. And not only do you get a lot more options by having this stem to squeeze, but it's also way more reliable and works way more consistently than the double tapping did on the AirPods Gen 2. The one thing you can't do with the stem control on the AirPods Pro is adjust the volume. If you wanna do that, you're gonna to have to either adjust it from your phone or maybe a smartwatch. When you pair the AirPods Pro with an iPhone, you do get a few more features versus pairing with an Android device. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen with you guys now so you can see what I'm doing here. So if you go to settings, then Bluetooth, then you tap the I next to AirPods Pro. You're gonna get into all these settings here and at the top, you can see disconnect and forget this device. That's pretty standard. Below that, you'll see that you can change the name of the AirPods. A little further down, you get noise controls. So you can manually turn on noise cancellation or transparency mode, but these do need to be in your ears to turn that on. A little further down, you'll see press and hold AirPods, and you'll see this left and right option. So if I tap the left option, this is gonna change the settings specifically for the left AirPod. And I can switch from long pressing for noise control to long pressing for Siri. So now if I squeeze the stem for, I think it's about two seconds, one or two seconds, then it'll activate Siri and I can start talking to Siri right from the AirPods. And this is just changing the setting for the left AirPod. If I tap back here, you see that the left AirPod is for Siri and the right one is for noise control. 
Now, by default, you can long press the stem for noise cancellation or transparency, switching back and forth between those. But if you want, you can also turn both of those off. And now when you long press the stem, it will switch between noise canceling, transparency, and off. And you can have any combination of two of these that you want. If you never use transparency, you can just disable that completely and you can have either noise cancellation on or off. Personally, I'm always using one of those two features. So I'm gonna switch it back to transparency and to turn off the off feature because I never actually use that. So if I go back, we look a little bit further down, you can see that there is an ear tip test. Now this is gonna make sure that there's a good seal with the tip that you have installed on your AirPods Pro. So basically you put the AirPods Pro in, you start the test, it's gonna play a little bit of music, and it's going to determine whether or not you have a good fit in your ears. And if it detects that you don't have a good fitment, it'll tell you to try a different size tip. When you do have a good fitment, it'll tell you that, and you won't need to make any more changes to your AirPods Pro. Now, further down, you get the option to disable automatic ear detection. This is something that's standard with every earbud I've ever used. Basically, when you put the earbud in your ears, it'll transfer whatever it was playing on your phone speakers to the earbuds instead. So if you're watching a YouTube video and then you put the earbuds in, it'll start playing it on the earbuds instead. And that's been the case with, I think, every earbud, every wireless earbud I've ever used. It just automatically transfers to the earbuds. But if you want to turn that feature off, you can. So when you put the earbuds in, you then have to manually select uh, to have it start playing the audio out of the earbuds. Again, I'm not, I'm not sure why you would do that. If you can think of a good reason to do that, let me know in the comments below. I'm just gonna go ahead and keep that on. The last option here is a microphone option. So by default, the AirPods Pro will automatically figure out which is the best AirPod to use for a microphone when you're making a phone call. I recommend keeping it on automatically, but if for some reason you wanted to make sure that it was always the left AirPod or the right AirPod when you're making phone calls, you can do that with this setting. So if you pull down your control center, then long press the volume slider, you'll get the options on the bottom to either turn on noise cancellation, transparency, or turn them both off manually there instead of squeezing the stem. So at the end of the day, while you do get more features when paired with an iPhone versus an Android device, none of those features are deal breaking features. You still get all of the stem control, active noise canceling and transparency modes when paired with an Android device. So if you're on Android and you're thinking about getting the AirPods Pro, they'll still be great buds with all of the main functionality. The last exclusive feature you get when pairing the AirPods Pro to an Apple device is the ability to use the Find My application on your iPhone or iPad. This application allows you to quickly find your AirPods by making them chirp if you lost them. All you have to do is open up the application, select your AirPods Pro, then tap Play Sound, and after a few seconds, they'll start chirping. And the chirping is gonna start low and gradually get louder and louder. Now, I don't know how well this is showing up on video, but in person, these are plenty loud enough to find if they're under a couch or between couch cushions, or maybe under a bed or even in another room, I'd still be able to hear these chirping pretty well. An important thing to know about this feature is that it only works if the AirPods are within Bluetooth range of your phone or iPad. The reason for that is that the AirPods Pro don't have Wi-Fi, so unless they're connected through Bluetooth, there's no way that your phone or iPad could tell them to start chirping. Fortunately, the Find My application also tells you the last known location of the AirPods Pro as well. So in this case, I'm in my house filming right now, and so the last known location is my home address. But if I left these at work, then my work address would show up, and I'd know that I could look for them when I get back to work. The AirPods Gen 2 also work with the Find My application in the exact same way as the AirPods Pro do. And the Jobber Buds have their own application that does the same. This works on both iOS and Android. So you can see the last known geographical location and make these chirp as well. The Galaxy Buds also have a Find My Buds feature, but it only works on Android devices and it doesn't give the last known geographical location, it only makes the buds chirp. And the Sony Buds don't have any Find My Buds feature, regardless of whether you're on an iPhone or an Android device. An important missing feature on the AirPods Pro is the ability to pair to multiple devices simultaneously. So you can be connected to a lot of different devices and switch your connection between them really quickly. You don't have to repair every time you switch between the devices, but you can't have both running at the same time. A practical example of this would be if you want to watch a movie on your tablet and listen with the AirPods Pro, 
but also be connected to your phone in case a phone call comes in so you can quickly answer the phone call. That's not something you can do with the AirPods Pro because you'd have to go onto your phone and then manually connect back to the AirPods Pro to take the call with these. Then after your phone call, you'd have to go back onto your tablet and then connect back to the tablet to continue watching the movie. But while it's disappointing that this feature is not here on the AirPods Pro, it's also not on the AirPods Gen 2, the Galaxy Buds, or the Sony Buds. The only buds in the bunch that actually have the ability to pair to multiple devices simultaneously are the Jabra Buds. So if it's extremely important for you to be able to pair to multiple devices at the same time, like you wanna to listen to that movie on your tablet and be able to get calls on your phone, if that's something you do often, then the Jabra Buds are really the only buds you can get in this bunch that'll give you that ability. The last important feature to talk about is the IP rating, how water resistant these are. These have an IPX4 rating, that means that you can wear these when you're working out, they're sweat resistant, but you can't take these into the shower or go swimming or anything like that. So if you plan on using these for working out and you're a super sweaty person, you got a lot of ear sweat, you don't have to worry about killing these buds. By comparison, the Galaxy Buds, Sony Buds, and AirPods Gen 2 don't have any IP rating at all. Now you should be fine working out with these regardless, unless you have like a ton of ear sweat and it just kind of pulls in your ear and and just gets into the speaker somehow. If like if you got super sweaty ears, uh, then I'd stay away from these ones if you wanna use it for working out. But for most people, these will be water resistant enough to work out with. The Jabra Buds, on the other hand, have an IP56 rating, which means they are much more water resistant than the AirPods Pro. So if you wanna go running in the rain or something like that, these are gonna be a safer bet than the AirPods Pro. Also notice that these are also dust rated. So that 56, that five is the dust rating for this. And the AirPods Pro were not tested for dust resistance at all. So if you work in a dusty environment and you still wanna have a pair of earbuds to wear, then these are gonna be the safer bet because these will block out a lot more dust than the AirPods will. Now for the big question, which of these buds should you buy? But before we get into that, if you guys appreciate these super in-depth videos, go ahead and let me know by dropping a like and consider subscribing to the channel to catch more videos just like this. If you're looking for a great set of earbuds for working out that have decent battery life, excellent sound quality, and you don't mind spending a premium for them, then the AirPods Pro would be a great bet. The stem controls work great even when you're working out, they're not gonna fall out while you're working out, and the battery's long enough for any exercise that you throw at it. On top of that, they do have some excellent sound quality. Another reason to buy the AirPods Pro over the rest of the buds would be if you use them to make a lot of phone calls. The sound quality for the person on the other end is much better when you're using the AirPods Pro versus the rest of the buds. If you wanna purchase the AirPods Pro or any of these other buds, I do have links to all of them in the description. If you're just looking for the best sound quality possible and you want incredible battery life, you want really comfortable earbuds that you can keep in your ears for a long time and you don't plan on working out with them and you don't mind spending a premium, then the Sony Buds are gonna be the way to go for you. The sound quality is absolutely incredible and is definitely the best when you take into account the pretty in-depth equalizer that you get to use to fine tune these earbuds to your personal taste. Pair that with the ridiculously incredible active noise canceling and you can't go wrong with the Sony Buds. If you plan on working out with these earbuds and you don't have a ton of ear sweat when you're working out and you want over 90% of the sound quality at half the price, then you're gonna wanna go with the Galaxy Buds. These have been my go-to buds for a long time, and if you wanna learn even more about these, I've done a full review just like this for the Galaxy Buds a few months back. If you wanna check that video out, I have a card popping out above, and there's also a link in the description. If you want great sounding earbuds for a great price, and you plan on using them for working out, particularly working out in the rain, or maybe you have a lot of ear sweat, and you happen to have larger ears, then the Jabra Buds will be a great bet for you. Now pair that with the ability to connect these to multiple devices simultaneously for maybe watching a movie on a tablet and taking phone calls on your phone at the same time, then these are definitely a good buy. So that just leaves the AirPods Gen 2. And to be completely honest, I can't really recommend these for anyone. Unless maybe you've already got a pair or you find some crazy deal on these, they're just not as good as what the other buds have to offer. When you take into account the fact that the controls only work sometimes and they're not that robust and they fit super loosely in your ear, it just becomes hard to recommend. But 
If you already have the AirPods Gen 2 and you do want to start working out with them, then you can check out the ear hooks that I mentioned earlier. These are the ones that I've used and these do work if you want to use these for working out. They're called the Ear Buddies Ultra and I'll have a link in the description if you guys want to check these out. Let me know which of these buds you purchased down in the comments below and let me know why you chose those buds for yourself. And as always, don't forget to like it if you liked it, share it if you loved it, and subscribe for more in-depth tech reviews just like this. And while you're at it, smack that notification bell so you'll be the first to know when the videos drop. That's it for this tech episode. God bless guys and I'll catch you in the next one.